Surah 25, Al-Furqan, The Criterion In the name of Allah, the most merciful, the most compassionate. Most blessed is he who sent down this criterion on his servant, to be a warner to all mankind. He to whom belongs the kingdom of the heavens and the earth, who has taken to himself no son, nor has he taken any partner in his kingdom, who created everything and then determined its destiny. Yet people have taken instead of him other deities, those that create nothing but are themselves created, who do not have the power to hurt or benefit even themselves, who have no power over death, nor over life, nor over the resurrection of the dead. Those who disbelieve in the message of the Prophet say, This criterion is nothing but a lie which he has forged with the help of others. Such have indeed resorted to a grievous wrong and sheer falsehood. They say, these are merely fairy tales of the ancients, which he has got inscribed, and they are then recited to him morning and evening, saying to them, O Muhammad, it is he who knows the secrets of the heavens and the earth who has sent down this book. Indeed, he is most forgiving, most compassionate. They say, what sort of a messenger is this? He eats food and walks about in the markets. Why was an angel not sent down to him so that he may remain with the messenger? and warn those that do not believe in him? Why was a treasure not bestowed upon him, or a garden whereof he might obtain his sustenance? The evildoers say, You are simply following a bewitched man. See what specious arguments they put forth before you? They are so strayed that they will not find their way to anything sound. Most blessed is he who, if he wills, can grant you even better than what they propose. Gardens beneath which rivers flow, and stately mansions. Nay, the truth is that it is the hour to which they give the lie. We have kept a blazing fire ready for him who denies the hour. When it sees them from a place afar, they will hear its raging and roaring. And when they are flung, chained together into a narrow place in it, they will fervently call there for annihilation. They will then be told, Do not call for a single annihilation, but for many an annihilation. Ask them, Is this state better? or the garden of eternity which the God-fearing have been promised. It shall be their recompense and the end point of their journey. The garden wherein whatever they desire will be fulfilled. In it they shall abide forever. This is a promise whose fulfillment your Lord has made incumbent on himself. On the day when he will muster together all the unbelievers as well as the deities that they worship beside Allah, and he will ask them, Was it you who caused these servants of mine to stray away, or did they themselves stray away from the right path? They will say, Glory be to you, it did not behove us to take any other than you as our guardians, but you lavished the pleasures of life upon them and their forefathers until they forgot the admonition and became doomed to destruction. Thus will those deities give the lie to all what you now say, and you will not be able to avert your doom, nor obtain any succor. We shall cause whoever of you commits wrong to taste an enormous chastisement. O Muhammad! We never sent any messengers before you, but they ate food and walked about in the markets. We made some of you a means to test each by the other, to see whether you remain patient. Your Lord is all-seeing. Those who do not look forward to meet us say, Why should angels not be sent to us? Or why do we ourselves not observe our Lord? Surely they are too proud of themselves and have gone beyond all limits in their rebellion. On that day, the day when they will behold angels, there will be no good news for those immersed in evil, and they will cry out, We seek refuge in Allah. And we shall turn to their deeds and shall reduce them to scattered dust. On that day, it is the inmates of paradise that will be graced with a better abode and a fairer resting place. On that day, the sky shall be rent asunder by a cloud and a whole cavalcade of angels will be made to descend. On that day, the true kingdom will belong only to the merciful Lord. That will be a hard day for those that deny the truth. A day when the wrongdoer will bite his hands, saying, Would that I had stood by the messenger. Woe is me! Would that I had not taken such a one for a friend. He led me astray from the admonition that had come to me. Satan proved to be a great betrayer of man. And the messenger will say, My Lord, my own people had made this Qur'an an object of laughter. O Muhammad, thus did we make for every prophet enemies from among those immersed in evil. 
your Lord suffices you as a guide and a helper. Those who disbelieve say, Why was the Qur'an not revealed to him all at once? It was revealed thus that we may fully impress it on your mind, and for the same end, we have revealed it gradually according to a scheme in fragments. This was also done so that, whenever they put any strange question to you, we sent its right answer and explained the matter in the best manner. Those who shall be mustered in the hell upon their faces, their stand is the worst and their way most erroneous. Verily, we granted Moses the book and appointed his brother Aaron with him as his helper, and said to him, Go, the two of you, to the people who have given the lie to our signs. Thereafter we utterly destroyed them. The same happened with the people of Noah. When they gave the lie to the messengers, we drowned them and made of them a sign of warning for all mankind. We have kept ready a painful chastisement for the wrongdoers. And in like manner were the Ad and the Tamud destroyed, and the people of Al-Ras, and many a nation in the centuries in between. We warned each of them by examples of the nations so destroyed in the past, and we totally annihilated each of them. They have surely passed by the town which was rained upon by an evil rain. Have they not seen it? Nay, but they do not believe in being raised up after death. Whenever they see you, they take you for nothing else but an object of jest, saying, Is this whom Allah has sent as a messenger? Had we not firmly preserved in our devotion to them, he had almost led us astray from our gods, but soon, when they see the chastisement, they will come to know who had strayed too far from the right way. Have you ever considered the case of him who has taken his carnal desire for his God? Can you take responsibility for guiding him to the right way? Do you think that most of them hear or understand? For they are merely like cattle, nay, even worse than them. Have you not seen how your Lord spreads the shade? If he will, he could have made it stationary. Instead, we have made the sun its pilot. So, as the sun rises, we gradually roll up that shade unto us. It is Allah who has made night a garment for you, and sleep the repose of death, and has made day the time of rising to life. And he it is who sends forth the winds as glad tidings, heralding his mercy. Then we send down pure water from the sky that we may revive through it a dead land and give it for drink to many cattle and human beings from among our creation. We present this wondrous phenomenon to them over and over again, that they may learn a lesson from it, but most people simply decline everything except disbelief and ingratitude. Had we so willed, we would have raised up in every town a warner. So, O Prophet, do not follow the unbelievers, but engage in a mighty striving against them with this Qur'an. And he it is who has joined the two seas, one sweet and palatable, and the other saltish and bitter. And he has set a barrier and an insurmountable obstruction between the two that keeps them apart. And he it is who has created man from water, and then produced from him two sorts of kindred, by descent and by marriage. Your Lord is all-powerful. And yet people worship deities other than Allah that can neither benefit them nor hurt them. Besides, the unbeliever is ever prone to come to the support of everyone who rebels against his Lord. We have not sent you, O Muhammad, except as a bearer of good tidings and a warner. Say to them, I ask of you no reward for my work. My only reward is that whoever so wills may follow the way leading to his Lord. O Muhammad, put your trust in him who is ever living, who will never die and glorify him with his praise. He suffices as the knower of the sins of his servants. He who created the heavens and the earth and all that is in between them in six days, and then ascended the throne, the merciful one, ask concerning him the one who knows. When they're told, prostrate yourselves before the merciful one, they say, what is the merciful one? Shall we prostrate ourselves before whomsoever you command us to prostrate? This even further increases their aversion. Most blessed is he who set a constellation in the heavens and placed in it a great lamp and a shining moon. He it is who has appointed night and day to succeed one another as a sign for him who desires to take heed or desires to be thankful. The true servants of the merciful one are those who walk on the earth gently and when the foolish ones address them, they simply say, Peace to you, who spend the night prostrating themselves before their Lord and standing, who entreat our Lord 
Ward off from us the chastisement of hell, for its chastisement is one that clings. Verily, it is a wretched abode and resting place. The true servants of the merciful one are those who are neither extravagant nor niggardly in their spending, but keep the golden mean between the two, who invoke no other deity along with Allah, nor take any life which Allah has forbidden, save justly, who do not commit unlawful sexual intercourse, and whoso does that shall meet its penalty. His torment shall be doubled for him on the day of resurrection, and he will abide in it in ignominy. Unless he repents and believes and does righteous works, for such Allah will change their evil deeds into good deeds. Allah is ever forgiving, most compassionate. Whosoever repents and does good, he returns to Allah in the manner that he should. The true servants of the Merciful One are those who do not bear witness to any falsehood and who, when they pass by frivolity, pass by it with dignity. Who, when they are reminded of the revelations of their Lord, do not fall at them deaf and blind. Who are prone to pray, Our Lord, grant us that our spouses and our offspring be a joy to our eyes and do make us the leaders of the God-fearing. They are the ones who will be rewarded for their patience. Lofty palaces will be granted to them, and they will be received with greeting and salutation. Therein they shall abide forever. How good an abode, and how good a resting place! Say to them, O Muhammad, My Lord would not care for you were it not for your prayer, but now that you have given the lie to the message of Allah, an inextricable punishment shall soon come upon you.